Um, you know, prayer. You know, praying for one another. And, you know, to be honest, I really struggle with prayer. You know, I think prayer is the most spiritual thing you can do because at least soul winning, there's like some results there. You know, you talk to people, you can, you can see. But, um, you know, prayer is, you know, when you, you're basically leaving it all up to God and just saying, hey, God, you need to do this for me. You know, and, and uh, you know, prayer is a, is a highly spiritual thing. It says here in James 5, 16, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So, you know, we have to, we should pray one for another. And, you know, that's why I, you know, make the list available and get the list if you don't have the list. You know, make sure your prayer requests are up to date um, and, and, and pray one for another. You know, that's something that we should uh, definitely be doing. Matthew 21, verse 12 and 13. Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And he said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And this is always a point that always stuck with me because Nowadays, the house of God is more known as a house of preaching, you know? But the Bible says that the house of God ought to be a house of prayer for all nations. That's what he wants it to be called. And that's part of the reason why I wanted prayer on Sunday mornings, because I didn't want this place to just be a, a, a house of food or a house of preaching. I wanted it to be a house of prayer as well. So definitely encourage you guys to try and make it along to 9 o'clock if you can to, to be part of that prayer. Now, I, I don't know, this is not actually my notes, but I just wanted to see if I can... Ah, oh, yeah, good. It's, yeah, Philippians 1. You know, this, this is an um, uh, interesting uh, passage. I, I just... Um, I don't know if I have the right verse. Ah, okay, here. I just wanted to show you this. It wasn't in my notes, but I just think this is a really great point about prayer to know that, you know, your prayers, you know, because we're talking about provoking unto love and good works, but see, your prayers actually make a difference to other people's spiritual walk. I mean, I don't know how God works that out, but we see here in Philippians 1 that Paul prayed for the Philippians and he believed that because he prayed for them, he was confident that God was going to work in their life. Look, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, Always in every prayer of mine for you all, making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So we just stop there. That's a very famous verse where people say, hey, you know, you're saved. Hey, God's going to work in your life. But I want you to see the context around this verse. So he's confident that Jesus Christ will work in, this, in their life. Verse 7. Even as it is meet for me to think of this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. So isn't it interesting there that the reason why Paul was confident that, uh, that, that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, the context there is he's saying, that I'm always in every prayer of mine for you all, making requests for his joy. He's praying for his brethren. And not only that, in verse 7, he says, even as it is meet for me to think this of you all. He's saying it's suitable that I'm confident and thinking this of you all because I have you in my heart. So it's like he's, he believes, and you know, I struggle with this too, but I'm just seeing this point here in the, in the Word of God, that the reason why Paul was so confident that Christ was going to work in them, that Christ was going to work in the tribulation that they were experiencing is because he was praying for them. And I just wanted to make this point here that you know, if you pray for one another, that does make a difference to the spiritual walk of other people. Don't think that you're praying in vain.